RMJ Movie Reviews back again with the continuation of my Arnoldathon with Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Well, oh well, oh well. I can just say this right off the top, right off rip. Terminator 2 is one of the greatest action pictures of all time. I will hold by that statement. The cool thing about Terminator 2 was by this point in Arnold's career, the trajectory was just going up. He was making bigger budgeted movies and his movies were making more money. So he had slipped from the commando part of his career into the big budget, high, huge action picture rank. He was already iconic for the role of the original Terminator, which at this point, you have to remember, this was 1991. There was only one Terminator movie at this point. So the anticipation for Terminator 2 was very high, including myself. I wanted to see this film so bad. A great example of melding science fiction, action, elements of horror into an epic scale of grand storytelling and engaging action entertainment. The original Terminator was more horror oriented. This film went straight into action level and also the switch was that Arnold Schwarzenegger played a villain in the original Terminator. As in this picture, he was brought back as a protagonist, as a good guy, a protector, assuming the role that Michael Bay, or excuse me, Michael Bean had in the original Terminator. But this time, he's meant to protect Edward Furlong, who plays John Connor, Sarah Connor's son, again played by Linda Hamilton. And this time, the villain is played by Robert Patrick, and he's actually a machine as well, but he's a highly advanced prototype called a T-1000, meaning he is a liquid metal. He can assume the identity of people, other human beings, and he can also create solid metal objects with any part of his body. He is the most vicious, de deadly villain. And I will say, at the time when Terminator 2 came out, these were groundbreaking special effects. I mean, to see Robert Patrick transform in liquid, and I will say, even upon rewatching this movie, I'm still enthralled by Terminator 2. I mean, it's one of those movies that once you start it, you're in. And I love that they carried over so many of the creative forces from the original film. Jane Cam James Cameron writes and directs again. Uh, his former ex-wife, Gail Ann Hurd, she produces. Linda Hamilton was a pacifist in the original Terminator. This time, she's gone crazy from her experiences of the original film, which is really more like a slasher film. And... She's basically fighting for her insanity. She's turned and assumed the role of Kyle Reese in this film. She has become a true soldier. Arnold, what I love is that Arnold seamlessly, he's still a Terminator and he's a repro reprogrammed Terminator, but he still does have the vicious killer edge that he had in the original film. Now granted, in the original film, his character is basically straight out slasher villain. But here, he still maintains the violence and the threat. But it's only toned down because he has to follow the orders of John Connor as he programmed him in the future before he sent him back to present day, 1991, Los Angeles. And Arnold uh, just plays the role with complete conviction and precision. As in Robert Patrick playing the villain. Extremely threatening. He's cold. He's calculated. You can see in his eyes when he is, he's already, I mean, basically, he's going to kill you if it means getting to John Connor. If he has to kill you, he's going to do it. But he is calculated. You can see his, you can see it in his eyes that his movement and his next move is calculated before he even does it. He is a very threatening villain. And I just think the way Robert Patrick embodies just like this calm slickness. And also at the time, this was the L.A. riots. The Rodney King beating had just happened. So police officers in Los Angeles were looked at as villains at this time. Linda Hamilton, again, she plays the psychosis of Sarah Connor. Uh, well, became psychosis, uh, neurotic, whatever you want to call it. She is so layered. Her performance, she's, she knows everything to be true, but she knows she's going crazy. And she struggles with the strength of trying to protect, but also try to keep her own psyche in mind because she's clearly gone over the edge, as indicated in the scene where she finds out where uh, Dyson, played by Joe Morton, is the one who actually uh, got a hold of, of the first Terminator hand and basically he creates the war for the future. She's gonna assassinate this guy. And this is a very uncomfortable and chilling scene, but you see in the moment, 
Dyson doesn't even know what he's doing wrong. She realizes that he's doing it wrong. Best action sequences that are engaging. The chase scenes where the T-1000 is just running after people. It is so exciting. And then I love the fact that Linda Hamilton gets in on the action with Arnold. They become a team. They join forces. So Arnold is shooting his shotgun and she's shooting out the window. It, I mean, the action is fantastic. Every action setup builds as the movie goes on. And the action sequences in Terminator 2 are so exciting. They're so fun. They're just as fun as when I saw this film for the first time. It... It really is such a well-written story. It continues the threads of the first film, bleeds it into this film, and it, it just feels like a continuation and everything doesn't feel cheated. The fact that Arnold comes back good, it doesn't feel like a cheat. The fact that Linda Hamilton doesn't trust him because he's the guy who killed all her friends in the first movie. They, they, uh, they kind of resolve that in the film as well. They resolve uh, John Connor's relationship with her mother and how all three of them kind of become a family by the end of the movie. Now I will say this version that I watched was the uh, extended version, which has the deleted scene of Michael Bean returning as uh, Kyle Reese. Uh, I didn't particularly care for the scene being in the movie. I think it's well written, but again, not needed, but it was cool to see Michael Bean back. Uh, there's also a scene where uh, the T-1000 finds out that uh, he's been fooled about knowing the dog's name when he kills the foster parents. So T-1000 promptly goes out back and murders the dog. And it's, I wish they would have kept that scene in because I think it shows that the T-1000 knows he was fooled. Brad, bring, up that, bring up that Brad Fidel, who did the music for Fright Night and the original Terminator, comes back to do the music again in a beautiful opening sequence that has fire and it shows what's going to happen to the world when judgment day comes it sets the tone perfectly for the film so you do get the rendition of the original score from terminator one but at this time it's it's much more kind of orchestral sounding and bigger and -da -da -da. It, it's such a beautiful piece of music and i love the titles for terminator 2 it, it's oh man this had it's just ah uh, and what i also love again is i will beat it over the head is that all these action sequences are practical so when you see the scene at the end which is a jaw-dropping stunt where the helicopter the t-1000 is chasing after linda hamilton and arnold and edward furlong in this truck the helicopter flies under the, a bridge a real bridge it's insane whoever did that is out of their mind they are crazy but it's breathtaking this is a great film i would give terminator 2 through and through a solid 10 out of 10 the action the storytelling the special effects the excitement this is the quintessential summer fun blockbuster action movie i cannot highly recommend terminator 2 more this is one of the greatest action pictures of all time i love terminator 2 thumbs up the video subscribe to the channel and share the video don't forget to hit the bell and leave comments down below about terminator 2 judgment day and if you don't like terminator 2 go ahead and watch the bridges of madison county i'll see you soon Cut.